Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks and you are checking out a silent tutorial on ADSR sounds. So this video is actually a uh, turned into like a three part video, never meant for that to happen, but you guys who've watched the previous two videos, I've gotten a lot of requests on in the comment sections asking for, in the first video we checked out the pads and there will be links to this in the uh, description. We made this pad sound in silent. Second video, because of the uh, comments asking for the bell lead, we made this sound. And finally, you guys have been asking for the bass, so we will recreate this bass in silent. All right, and so that will round out pretty much every sound in this demo that was made with silent. So let's get into it. Uh, I have a new instance pulled up, uh, ready to go. So first thing you're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna go to the glide or portamento first, and that wouldn't be, for some of you, that may not be the first place you'll go when you're des designing sounds, but in hip hop, especially in like uh, future R&B and a lot of those genres that are popular right now, there is a lot of glide or portamento on the bass, on the bass sounds, and that actually helps glue things together in the mix. So you can see here, really quick before we get into the actual design of the sound, I purposely played the bass line to overlap. You know, see this note right here overlaps with that note, so there'd be a little bit of the portamento. Same with this, and same with pretty much every note. Some notes don't have the glide, some do. That's just a stylistic choice, depending on how much glide or portamento you want in the bass line. So what we're gonna do is just turn the portamento up to about halfway, actually, so it's, it's a good amount. It's about 4.95, around five should do it. And we're gonna do mono legato, and we're gonna keep it on, for the slide, our normal, where we want it on normal. So now our sound should have the portamento. All right, so that's what we want, just that little glide, and you can do that to taste, obviously. So for the actual sound here, um, it is just going to be a stack of a couple saw waves. So with uh, oscillator A1, we're gonna crank the voice count up to eight, uncheck re-trigger, so it's a little more of a subtle sound, a little bit less digital. And I'm gonna pitch this down to negative one for the octave. So right now it sounds too like too much like an electro, kind of an EDM style bass. So we need to do some things to change that. That's all gonna happen with the filtering and some effects. But we need to just get the sound a little bit better before we even get to that point. So I'm gonna turn this volume down here. Uh, we're gonna turn it down to about 3.4-ish, maybe around four. Uh, anywhere around three and a half should do. We're gonna turn the detune up just a pinch because if you detune a bass too much, it's gonna be weird. Um, so we're just gonna detune this to maybe about 0.6. Just add a little bit of width. Keep the stereo and pan where it is. All right, let's go over to oscillator A2. We're gonna change this to a saw wave. So we want both oscillator A1 and A2 to be saws. And with this one, it's gonna basically be the same thing. We're gonna pitch it down. We're gonna keep the volume up on this one and detune more on this than we did in oscillator A1. So we're gonna go out to probably around three, 3.15 3 maybe. So we gotta give this, uh, this oscillator some voices so we can actually hear it. Same thing, uncheck, retrig if you wanna get the sound exactly like I had it. All right, and then I even messed with the fine tuning a little bit on oscillator A2 just to add some further separation between the oscillators because they're just saw sounds and to make it a little bit creepier sounding. So that's just os oscillator A2 right now. If we bring back oscillator A1, it's a pretty good thick sound to work with before we start subtracting from it with filters and effects and all that sort of stuff. All right, let's dial in the amp envelope. I want the attack all the way down. I don't want this sound to have any attack, so at zero will suffice. And then for the decay, we're gonna turn the decay up to about 2.9, just a shade under three. My mouse doesn't wanna go there. Oh, there it is. All right, so sustain, we're gonna keep the sustain up uh, pretty much where it is, maybe a little less, but uh, 
reason I'm keeping the sustain up quite high is because with this progression that I played, you can see that I'm holding out the notes for a long duration. I mean, some notes are getting uh, two bars of counts at 95 beats per minute. So I want the sustain up so that energy stays throughout the song or out throughout the little beat I made. All right, the release, let's give it a little bit of release. So when I'm transitioning from note to note, we not only have the glide coming into play, we also have a little bit of release. So we'll maybe turn it up to... All right, that sounds pretty good. Okay, let's move on now because uh, the we're not using oscillators B1 and B2, which is part A for this sound. So let's go to the filter. So for the first filter here, what we're going to do is we are going to choose a low pass filter. And then the cutoff, we're actually going to turn up to around, I think it's 1,000 hertz, around 1,070-ish if you can get there. Give it a little bit of drive, and that's all we're going to do for filter A. And then in the master filter control, what we're going to do is we're going to cut out some of those filter, some of the harmonics that we just kind of controlled with filter A. The reason why I'm going to do that is I will ultimately bring them back into play, but in a much more sculpted fashion based on what type of sound this is and how I'm playing it in my song using a modulation envelope, modulating or going routing into the cutoff. So we're going to turn this master cutoff down to about 15 hertz. I'm going to give it a little bit of resonance. All right, so let's move on now to the modulation envelope, or the first modulation envelope. And what we're going to do with this is select cutoff A because we're not using part B, so we don't have to even go there. And we're going to do a negative modulation value for this. It's kind of a cool sound to play with. So we're going to turn it down to about negative 1.71, 1.62, anywhere in there should do. And the attack, we're going to turn the attack up a little. So basically, we're modulating the cutoff in a negative fashion with this. And we're telling it to have a little bit of attack before it starts to modulate out some of those frequencies. So we're going to just go up to about 1.84 for the attack. So it's not a lot of time. And then the decay, we're going to boost to around 4. Let's just take the attack down to about 1.4. See that little wham, that little thing going on? That's what the cutoff modulation is doing. All right, and then the sustain. We are going to turn the sustain up to about 6.5, or just a shade under 7. All right, and then I give it a little bit of release. Moving on to modulation envelope 2, we are going to select pitch A. And what we're going to do is we're going to do another negative modulation depth for this little rotary knob. We're going to go to negative 3.24. It's kind of important to get close to that value. And what we're going to do with this decay is we're going to turn it up to about 2.53. So I'll crank it up so you can hear this effect. It's adding like this low decay or this low part to the the decay of the sound, which I like. So if you go too high, it's kind of a crazy, nasty effect, but it kind of makes the sound have a little bit of ambiance and vibe if you get it just right. All right, so that's the sound. Let's go to our effects to kind of make this thing a little bit more interesting. I used a little bit of overdrive. I kept the amount at around 50%. I just turned down the dry, wet to taste. I also added some course to the sound to add some depth in the stereo field to it a little bit. So with the delay, with the delay time, I had that at about 8.8 .8 milliseconds, which is where it is by default. The rate I had up just a shade above default at about 0 0.79, 0 0.8. The depth, I believe I had that at around, should be around 40%. I had it in dual mode, which makes it a little bit of a thicker sound. The feedback is down at pretty much zero. The width we kept up all the way, and then I just dry wet to taste. All right.
right? And then I had some EQ on here on one pole. So it says one pole right there. It's kind of hard to see there on the skin, but it is one pole. So for the bass, what I did was I took that down to about four decibels. The bass frequency, I just kept where it is, which should be at about 115, 110. So I turned it up a shade above the fault. The treble, I turned down to zero decibels. And the treble frequency, I turned down a little as well. All right, and I think I even had some reverb on this, which sounded, which kind of is weird for a bass, but it worked for the sound. So I'm just gonna do that to taste real quick. And then finally, I had some compression on it just to boost its overall energy. I had a ratio of about three, I think it was about three point three to one, basically. Uh, threshold kept where it was. The attack, I believe I turned it down even a little bit further from where it is by default and had the release a shade higher than where it normally is. It's about 200 milliseconds. So there's that sound. All right, there it is. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to reiterate that if you want to know how to make the other two sounds in this uh, little beat thing here, uh, you can check out the links below in the description. There'll be links to both of those videos for the pad and that bell lead. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time.